Today I've got some high-end Valentine's dupes. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Okay, we're going to start off with this Be Mine canvas from Michaels for $24.99. So, I'm going to take a piece of white tissue paper and I'm going to cut it down to fit it on top of a piece of cardstock. You want to try to get this smooth and wrinkle free so that it will go through your inkjet printer without any hangups. So this is how it looks so far. You just choose your little what you want to print out and print it. For this particular project, if you didn't have a printer, you could also use a page out of a book maybe that you already have or you can use a coloring page and just color that up or you could also use tissue paper or anything like a sticker you could use that too so I'm just using a white like a shadow box that I got at the thrift store but you can get these at craft stores and you can also get something similar to this at Dollar Tree so with the tape still on here just to make it easier to handle I'm just gonna start cutting these into pieces while I make a decision on which one of these I want to use I knew when I saw this on the website that there was no way I would pay $24 for this and I knew that we could make something just as nice on a budget so now we're going to use this plaster chalk paint and we're going to paint over the box I'm going to paint all of the surfaces on the front and then on each of the sides and this is just so when I put down my white tissue paper it's going to blend in and I didn't want a stark white I prefer this creamy color so that's what I'm going to do for it but you can use whatever you have you can also use acrylic paint but this chalk paint is matte finish and the tissue is going to be a matte finish so it blends in nicely I'm also going to use two of these little Christmas tags and this video is part of the let's dupe it challenge by crafts by ash DIY and decor check out the links in the description box below all right, so I'm gonna get this a little more manageable and just kind of cut it in a little circular shape around here. That way I'm not having to deal with any corners and I just find when I'm using Mod Podge, if I cut things in a circle or with rounded edges, I have less trouble with the corners trying to peel up. So that's my personal choice, but you can do this however you like. I meant to mention earlier too, you could also use a pretty napkin to do something like this. That would be very nice. But since it was a bee on the original one, I was inspired to make my own bee and put down on my box. So now I'm just painting on some matte Mod Podge and removing the little brush hairs when they fall out. I'm just gonna gently place this down in a thin layer of Mod Podge and then go over the top of it with my finger just to smooth it down gently. And then what's left on the brush, I'm gonna go ahead and go around all of the edges and the border and then work my way onto the inside. And that will push any bubbles out and make it nice and flat. It's gonna blend in nicely and it almost looks like it's hand painted and I absolutely love that. I'll try to grab that link for you where I got these from and put it in the description box because these were free. So, so far, I already had the box, I already had the paint, I had the printer already, the tissue paper I had from Christmas time, I already had the Mod Podge. So far, I've done this for free. So, let's see what else we can do. Now, for a little bonus, I'm going to do these little Christmas tags. They're not part of the dupe. I just wanted to go ahead, since I had such cute little bees, and make a little matching, um, coordinating tags to go along with it. And you could use these like on your tear tray or you could use them hanging you know in a book something like that however you want to use these for decor there will be great little extra pieces that will match the little box there that we did or the shadow box they used a canvas but i used a, uh, a shadow box but you can get the little canvases at dollar tree also so you need to let those dry, of course. Now you can use big stickers on here to say be mine, and of course I'm missing a, an E there, but I decided not to use those anyway. And I'm using some of these little wooden letters. You can get something similar to this at Dollar Tree. I thrifted mine. 
then you can either paint them a color that coordinates if you would like or a Valentine's color you could do red or whatever you like but I'm gonna use a furniture repair marker because I like to use these for stain and I have a rustic home if you are new to this channel that you might not know that about me but I have rustic farmhouse decor in my home I live in a cabin and uh, it's a log cabin and I like to try to keep it real in this house I it would not look right with a modern farmhouse, so I try to go with the flow and go with what we have already in the house. And this type of decor just matches and it makes me happy. It's nice and cozy and woodsy and I love that. I love that about rustic decor. It's very homey, it's very comfortable. So you're just gonna go around the inside, the outside, all over. It's not necessary to waste your paint on the back. Um, and then let it dry. It just takes a moment to dry and then use the smallest amounts of hot glue. Now don't worry if you get some strings of glue here because I'm going to show you a way that you can remove that quite easily. You clean it up and make it look high end. So B and then I'm going to spell out mine. Now on theirs it was actually painted on the canvas it appears but I wanted to use something raised and I think mine looks even better. What do you think? And the fact that mine was free makes it even better of course. Now I'm just going to use my little Cricut tool here and just pull those little strings up. Once they dry, it's easier to remove. So theirs was $24.99 and mine was free. Okay, so now we're going to go on to those little tags there. And I decided to add an X and an O on the bottom of this little B tag. So I did the same thing. I stained it, but I used a darker stain. I'm just going to use the smallest amount of hot glue to put these on the bottom of the tag. Very cute, X and O, hugs and kisses, or kisses and hugs, whichever one. Now I'm gonna overlap these tags near the top very easily. You can still see my bees, I think this is very cute. I'm gonna use some jute, and I have a jute little um, box that I roll my jute out of. I could just pull it and cut it when I need it. And I'm gonna thread it through there, tie a little knot so that it is nice and long. You could use this as a little bookmarker if you wanted to. Or like I said, hang it on your tiered tray. If you have one of those metal trays with a knob on the top, this will hang perfectly off. Very cute. Be sure to follow me on my social media, Pinterest and Instagram. Okay, on to the next one. This is another Michaels inspired canvas wall art. It's the little plaid heart. We're going to use one of these large crafter square canvases from Dollar Tree some of this red and black checked paper well it's vinyl from Dollar Tree I'm gonna take a big piece of that it's still on the backing if you're new to Cricut always leave it on the backing here I'm gonna roll it and burnish the heck out of it so I don't have any trouble then I'm gonna print out my heart and I did slice a word in that heart so now I'm just gonna pull that out and I have love right in there. How simple is that? So easy, so, so easy. I've got some transfer paper here. I'm gonna cut a section off that is workable for the size of my heart. Pick that up and drop it accidentally. Not a problem. Remember, we don't sweat the small stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay that down so easily, lifting that piece of transfer paper up press that down making sure everything sticks nicely I want all of my sticker or my transfer there to stick onto that transfer so I can pull it off and move it over easily don't you just love this part the final reveal I love this part so I'm just peeling it up and it's it came off very easily now I don't know how long the Dollar Tree vinyl will last but I'm very pleased with it so far. So I just peel that off. I'm just gonna gently kind of eyeball it and then let it rest very lightly on the top while I measure to make sure that it is straight, that both parts of the heart are straight and even on the top. And they are two and a quarter, two and a quarter. And then I'm gonna press from the inside out first. And I'm gonna grab my little tool and burnish it down again 
making sure that I am pressing my vinyl down onto my canvas board back there. Now this is not exactly the same plaid. This is more of a check than the plaid, but I think for the fact that I had all of these at my house already, yeah, I'll take this free item any day over what the other item cost. This was the easiest one. So easy. I hope you can try to do something like this. It's very, so simple. Now you can either use it as a leaner or you could make a little hanger for it. Just a short length of jute here across the back. I find if you use a hanger like this, then you can move it back and forth on your nail or hook, whatever you're hanging it on, so that it is balanced and even exactly as you want it. If you use just a loop, sometimes if you don't get it centered, it won't hang right. Okay, so theirs was $30.99, mine was free. Next one, another Michaels inspired hanging canvas, $34.24. All right, look at this cutie. I printed this off, it's not exactly the same thing, but I like it. Also, I might add that this one is quite a bit smaller. If you look at the picture, it shows theirs hanging behind a chair and it's probably twice this size. But for the same type of look on a smaller scale, and again, I didn't have to pay anything for mine. I already had this stuff at home. I think this is a really good option. I'm gonna use my little cutting tool here. This came from Dollar Tree, it comes in a three pack. I love this, these things, I use them all the time. It's like a little razor and you just push when you need another length to come out and cut it and then it retracts back into the thing. I drew my little marks here and then I'm making lines. I kind of clip into the edge so I know exactly where to cut it on the other side. I'm firmly pressing down on the sides and then on the front and the back and I'm just gonna gently rock back and forth and apply some pressure until the handle pops off. Just like that. Same thing with this one. That one was even easier. I'm going to take a, this is part of a sanding tool, it's just a sanding paper, and I'm going to just go back and forth and just slightly rock the edges on this stick. That's gonna give it just a little bit of a curve and it'll be nice and smooth so there's no splinters and it'll give you a nice finished look. Not bad, right? Same thing with this one. This is very easy to do. You could use your sanding block if you have one of those from Dollar Tree. All right, so once you get that the way it needs to look, we're gonna go on to coloring it. You can paint yours, you can leave them natural, you can do what you want, but I like to use my antiquing wax and a damp baby wipe. I'm just going to lay that color on the stick and rub it in. And be sure that you get your ends. It's not necessary to color the back and on the bottoms and the sides so that it's nice and finished because like I said, the idea is to achieve a high-end look and not have to spend a lot of money doing it. And making sure that you get all your little details covered here is going to give you that nice look that you want. People will come in your house and not know if you bought it or if you made it. Okay, so once they are dry, because you don't want any of that stain to transfer over onto your pretty white paper, just checking here to make sure that I have it exactly how long I want it and where I'm gonna place it down. And then for me, it's easier just to go ahead and put the glue on the stick and then turn the paper over and put it down. I feel like I can get my measurements more exact this way. I can see exactly where I'm putting it. And it will be perfectly straight. I'm gonna do the same process with the other end. Just putting some glue down. Make sure you don't get too close to your edge because you don't want that glue to pop out onto the front of your sign. I'm just pressing it down to make sure that it is stuck down nicely. And then all we need now is a hanger. So of course, you know me and my jute. I'm just gonna pull some of that jute out. You could use a pretty ribbon here. You could use colored jute. You could use a different type of maybe baker's twine would be pretty here if you like it. 
whichever way you want to do it but I think my inspiration piece was um, a jute string so that's what I am using here for mine I love the little vintage kids I remember Valentine cards and I remember getting them and the little retro look really cute very nostalgic so there's my little cuties Theirs was 34.24 and mine was free. Now look at this. 64.50 for a pillow cover from Pottery Barn. Nay, nay, I say. Okay, so I already had that fabric. I already had this piece of velvety cord. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this over so that I have 18 inches on each side or 36 inches total across. Then I'm going to cut them down. So the size of the pillow will be 18 inches. If that made any sense at all. Okay, so I'm gonna use my hot glue because this is a decorative pillow. I'm not planning on putting this in the washing machine or doing anything too fancy. Certainly, if you wanna try this and make it something that you keep for a while, go ahead and use a fabric glue or go ahead and use your sewing machine and sew your edges down. I'm going up about a half an inch up and putting my stream of glue down and I'm gonna do that on both sides and I'm gonna do it about two-thirds of the way on the third side that is loose and the fourth side is where we folded it so you don't have to do anything there I love this fabric I've used it on several different projects and I still have a good bit left be sure you protect your fingers and you can get these little protectors from Dollar Tree. Okay, so once you've gone around and you have that opening there, you're gonna put your hand down in there and pull your inside out. Go ahead and put your finger right into those corners. If you need to, you can clip the corners before you flip it and it'll give you a nice crisp corner. And then you can, it, you know, if it bothers you and you need to press it, you know, you can do whatever you need to do. But for me, like I said, this is decorative. This is something that uh, I'm just not going to be fussy about this. So you can see up there to the left side is where it's open. Now I'm using a yellow marker. I don't recommend that you do this. I did this so that you could see this on here while I am placing my piece of yarn down. I'll get the words out in a minute girls. Work with me. And then I'm going to write it one more time because that's how it was. Now theirs was embroidered from Pottery Barn but I'm going to get the look without actually doing embroidery. And all I'm going to do is take this beautiful burgundy or deep red color. I'm going to carefully take my glue gun. I recommend that you use a detailing glue gun or something with a very fine tip so you don't have glue squishing out all over the place. Take this as inspiration and you do a better job with it than I'm doing. But you continue around just like you would if you were writing the word in cursive. So just like I wrote it, I want to follow the same curves and twists and turns with the glue and the yarn. So I'm just pressing it down gently. I don't want any glue squishing out like I said I don't want a big mess here and you certainly do not want a big mess if you want something to be out in the public where people can see it so just like that add a little bit where you need it now if you are not in a rush and you know I had to in order to get this video done for you I needed to use a shortcut you can always use certain types of glue sticks are for fabric so you could use that you could use something like that I think it's called stitch witchery or there's some type of a fabric glue that you can use that's in a a bottle with a tip on it so you can get a fine line you could use that instead if you trust yourself to do this without writing it first you could definitely do that and then you would have no marks there are also markers and pins that you can get um, in the sewing section of stores that is disappearing ink. So you could try that if you wanted to. 
And if you just felt like you wanted to sew it, you could definitely sew that on there yourself. You could embroider it, whichever way you want to do it. If you didn't have yarn, you could even use your Cricut. If you have a Cricut and, you know, um, cut something to put on here, whichever way you want to do it. Give yourself some options. And I, I'll tell you, I really like the way this pillow turned out. I do. I like it. There's definitely, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of yellow showing. There's a little bit of glue showing here and there. But I'm going to put this on my couch and I'm going to be proud of it. Okay, so a little bit of fuzz came off. I'm just going to remove that fuzz. Now, I've got a pillow here that I use specifically for stuffing other pillows. And I'm just, when I pull it out of the pillow, I take it in my hands and pull it apart several different, you know, like pull it and then push it and pull it. You see what I'm doing there? Kind of fluffing. And you want to shove that in there to the bottom corners first, you know, the farthest away from me. You can see what I'm doing. And then continue to pack it in there um, till you get close to that outside. You don't want to put too much in where the opening is. You can always fluff that up later, but kind of get that out of your way. I like to use some clamps when I'm doing pillows to help hold things in place. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using those clamps to give me an extra hand. I'm holding that pillow um, under my arm so I can hold that seam straight. And then pinching it together using my clips, giving it a second to dry and cool. Make sure that it is sealed all the way across. And I've just got that corner left there. And again, you can use a special glue for this if you would like, or you could sew this yourself rather than gluing it. Whatever works best for you. And then you can just fluff it all out. Shaking that pillow down, fluffing it, pushing it out into the corners. And I think that looks pretty darn good, don't you? Not bad at all. I'm going to work with it. Theirs was $69.50 for just the cover, and I got a whole pillow for free. Love it. Love dupes. Love inspired videos, and I'm so glad that Ashley did this, and I had the opportunity to join and meet some new people. I appreciate the opportunity. Which one of these projects did you like best, and will you be trying one of these? I hope you do. If you are not already part of my YouTube family, I would love it if you would join in. If you liked anything that you saw in the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video. Check out the links below to see more. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.